Before we look more at the city of Babylon itself, there's a character we have to quickly introduce ourselves to. Nimrod's wife and queen, a woman known today as Semiramis. It's important we learn about her because in many respects, she may be an even more important figure than her husband. Like Nimrod, it's hard to get an accurate idea of Semiramis that is untainted by legend, but the story goes something like this. When Noah's Ark settled on dry land again after the flood, the eight people on board began to spread out and fill the areas of modern-day Iran, Turkey and Syria. After probably another 500 to 600 years, they spread still further to Iraq. Some reckon this was simply because of increasing populations, and others say it may have had something to do with rivalries between the family lines of Shem, Ham and Japheth, Noah's sons. At any rate, modern archaeology confirms that the people who occupied these areas were of the same race and culture, and the most reliable research indicates that it was from this region that animal husbandry, agriculture, metalwork and citification spread throughout the earth. On this point, science and scripture are agreed. The only difference is the timescales involved. The Bible clearly states that these elements of civilization existed in the pre-flood world, but due to the unbelief of science, they have created a mythical stone age several millennia back in time to account for the evidence. It was in Iraq, or Mesopotamia as it was referred to then, that the first major post-flood cities were built. There were seven major ones in total and the name Land of Seven Cities was often referred to in ancient mythology. These are the seven cities cited in the Bible as being conquered by Nimrod to establish his empire. We can gather that he probably came up from Ethiopia with his army via the Gulf on boats around 1000 years after the flood. It was in the middle of the conquest of the area that Nimrod apparently met Semiramis. Tradition has it that she was a brothel keeper in the city of Erech. Although we don't know for certain that they met in that brothel, we can reasonably assume that their initial meeting was in quite unsavoury and seedy circumstances. Nimrod made her his consort and his queen, but of course it wouldn't do to have a prostitute as a queen, so a story was invented that she was in fact a virgin that had sprung from the sea when Nimrod came ashore on his conquest of the area. This no doubt gave her an air of mystique and intrigue. Semiramis is actually a Greek form of her name which was originally Samur Amat, which means gift of the sea. Semiramis rose to a position of power on the basis of her relationship with Nimrod, but as we'll see later, her influence eventually overwhelmingly obscured that of her husbands, both during their lifetimes and in the wider context of history. In appearance, she was noted for being outwardly extremely beautiful, but also for her gross immorality and licentiousness, no surprise given her professional background in the sex industry. Along with Nimrod, she helped rule the newly created empire of Babylon.